Parkour and free running, two words few people know the meaning of. Even less known are the men who practice this discipline, called trasseurs. Who are these men? What makes them tick? These athletes devote themselves to a discipline that can only be described as the art of movement. Parkour originated in suburbs of Paris, I think it's Every and Lys. The founders of parkour, or the founder I should say, was David Bell. He and his friends uh, began playing around as kids and eventually developed what is now parkour. Before I did parkour, I just see it as, you know, something you have to walk around, you have to go around a fence, but now I always look at things with an eye of, what could I do with this? How could I go over it? How could I use it to move? Not just as something that's blocking my path, but creating a new path. Obstacles become opportunities, whereas most people would see a wall and think, oh, I have to go around that. If you do parkour, then you will see that wall as an opportunity to use your skill. Parkour uses almost every kind of muscle imaginable. Uh, with the exception of gymnastics using all their different kinds of apparatus, I can't imagine a single activity that works your body and conditions, conditions it more fully. Parkour's philosophy is really like overcoming obstacles, knowing what you can do and surpassing that, getting from one place to another. The idea is to get from one point to another the quickest and easiest way possible while overcoming all obstacles in your way. And that's just a good idea on life. Like, you don't want to try and back around something or not do something just because there's something in your way. You want to go through it and pass over it. My favorite stunt wouldn't actually be a parkour move. It would be free running, which is slightly different than parkour. Parkour is simply like used to escape a dangerous situation, while free running would be just for fun and to look good, like stylistic tricks. Mine would probably be a backflip stunt off of a high ledge. Parkour training is very varied. Um, it involves a lot of different kinds of intensities of movement. So you train a lot with very precise, small movements, pre precision jumps from one small location to another small location, really working on maintaining full control of your body. So that's one aspect of the training. There's uh, general purpose conditioning is involved a lot. You've got you know, cardiovascular running and, and the uh, strength aspect involved both in how strong you are in terms of you know, being able to pull your whole body weight over a wall, but also being able to repeatedly do that kind of movement over and over again. Uh, well, usually people start with just daily routines of a good workout of push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, just get some good arm strength. Soft landing is maybe an area that's in grass, or if you really want to go and like train inside a gym where they have like padded floors or anything, you just want to make sure you're safe and know what you're doing. You might want to start off in a gymnastics area so that you can just learn what you're doing and make sure not to get hurt before you go outside and try everything. It is very important to take baby steps when practicing parkour. You really have to work up bit by bit. If not, you're going to get yourself hurt. Um, it, it's very important to start off not by jumping off of a house, but by just jumping from one line on the sidewalk to the other, making sure that you land without making a sound, then graduating to a curb, then adding just inch by inch until you get a good soft landing. That's your base. Because you train so carefully and so thoroughly before you ever get to a large maneuver, the risk of injury during any given session is usually pretty low. And one of the primary tenets of parkour training is you never do anything that you're not comfortable with. Uh, I practice at least every Saturday. We get a group together out here on campus and we practice and then sometimes during the week and I'll do like little workouts at night. A good location is really what you make of it. It usually involves ledges or rails, something to climb over, jump over, hop down or latch onto. A good location for parkour would be something with a lot of diversity, a lot of uh, different elevations perhaps, um, some railings, walls, some trees. If you think something looks like it's not very sturdy, you don't want to go and break it. So we just try to protect our environment and keep it how it is when we first saw it. Well, as a result of taking all of these baby steps uh, and slowly building up, you gain a confidence in your ability to move through and over obstacles. So when you actually go out and are using the techniques that you've developed in parkour, it just feels like an extension of walking. Oh, I plan to do parkour as long as I can. PK for life.
These athletes participate in the sport with no rules and no competitors but themselves and gravity. So maybe one day you'll walk by and see a blur pass you on your way to class. And just think, that might be a trasur.